you you don't see any preview. I would have assumed that you would see a preview. Okay. All right. Yeah, make sure it looks good. No. Oh, hello. Are we live on the air? Are we live on the air? Check, check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. Local mic. Peaking. I'm hitting red, but... It'll live. Check, check, one, two, three. I've got too many mice, too many computers. So little time. Well, no one spoke, so. I genuinely don't know what mouse... My mouse is dead. Oh, I'm in the VM. Haha, <laughs> derp. I'm an idiot. Alright. My, my, my mouse is stuck on the VM. I'm literally rebuilding the VM. Well, it's the same problem, I think, with the, with the looping, but, oh, there it is. But I thought we looped, when I did this, it looped it. Alright, how about now? Say something now. <laughs> this is so fun. I love it. Where's the IRC? We hear you! Oh, we hear me! Well, <laughs> we hear who? I, I wasn't looking down at the, uh, at the screen. Wait, that has the IRC open. In somebody front of else me. talk. Yeah, so we, so, do we hear, we hear Michael Fox. Hello. Alright. So, Okay, we, that's our that's our loop echo. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's so check it's now me that I'm echoing. Oh yeah. Okay, but I didn't have it before when he fixed it. So you want me? I mean, I could mute myself to just prevent. No, the whole I thing. think it's anyway. right, but we just might as well use Skype at that point. Well, I think the issue is that it's looping off my too. hearing. Yeah. So. Can you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if it's looping still? I mean, it's only for us, so check, check, check. Uh, I still hear the echo. Yeah, you have to. You can't be on YouTube and Skype at the same time. not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. What are we waiting on now, the loopback issue? I think that answers your question.
I know somebody's going to say something about this hat. Let me explain something. My name is not Guy Caballero. Uh, you laugh because you know who that is, don't you, Dan? <laughs> but actually, I love I love Guy Caballero. So I can't. I can't uh, it's a nice Panama. It, it, Mike, since you're a millennium, millennial, both Mikes, I think, are millennials, right? So, yeah, I most of us are. I think the loop back issue by muting Michael Bob. There's a sh there used to be a show called SCTV, Second City Television. And, um, what did I know? It's a very, all you have to do is just type in on YouTube and, uh, there's a lot of the, you can find the channel. Very funny stuff. Hmm. And the president, it was about a, a crazy uh, TV station that was in Canada that would uh, air all types of crazy programs. And the guy that was the president was this uh, very, uh, he's almost underworld type figure. He was more like a type of guy that was always a scam artist. His name was Guy Caballero. And he would always be in a wheelchair even though he could walk. Now, now <laughs> the echo's back. <laughs> I just need to keep Michael Poss muted to keep the echo away. <laughs> yeah, that's the... It's, 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 listen, this is the technology. We're getting used to it right now. It's, so it's going to be like this for a few minutes more. We should do this, though, like as a group thing. We haven't seen each other in a long time. We should probably turn off video so that we're not wasting his bandwidth. Check, check. Can you guys hear me now? Rob? Almost. Very quiet. So yeah, so that, oh boy, what just happened? Are y'all still there? Everybody agreed to turn off our VM. All right, I, uh, yeah, I'm off you're, everyone. So you're not going to provide YouTube with enough bandwidth. We're going to have to uh, figure something out. I think we might have to end the YouTube stream for a second, because I think the, my, uh, my processing computer is not happy. So uh, i got to think about this real quick. All right, yeah, we can do it this way. Go. Are we on live? It says we're on live.
Hi, hi, world. It says live. Check, check, one, two, three. Hey. Oh, I should do it on my computer. Why is our YouTube stream private? Oh, I know. Okay, I got it. I mean, no one's watching it. I guess no one's live on YouTube right now, but me and me. So that's cool. Mike, can you hear me? Uh, I think uh, I think we're working now. Yeah, it's choppy again. I'm choppy. Wow, you were loud. Your audio is choppy and garbled again. Okay. Are you going? Should I do a CLC? Uh, I, I think I'm live. Yeah, I saw you pop back in. Into the YouTube? I'm trying to see what it is. My phone is spinning. Okay. Or the other, let either troubleshoot it and let me do a CLC. So I'll get a bigger font in a second. Um, it is not giving me the full size of that. Oh, it's, uh, I guess the window is too big. Let me make that a little bit smaller for everybody, and then I'll move the font around so people can read it, and then we'll do a little command line corner while we're, we're poking around. There we go. We'll just move that there, and we're good. We're gonna, there we go. And... 
a little bit bigger for everybody. I think everybody can see that now. Okay, so uh, I'm sitting around in IRC, and uh, I'm going to do a little command line uh, corner while we're um, waiting on uh, Mr. Potts to, to have uh, some issues resolved. So I guess uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and show a couple of things going on here. Let's see if we actually have people watching. We got we still got people. Sweet. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Really appreciate it. Sorry about the... Uh, uh, delay, uh, but uh, we're uh, we're rolling for right now. So uh, let's see. I'm gonna take uh, take any questions from the um, from the chat or the uh, or the IRC. But uh, I'll just go ahead and start doing some some cool stuff. So let's see what what can we do first. Well, first let's SSH over to my uh, to my server, so yeah, that'll be that. Whoop. Looks like it's spinning. I'm not sure if I'm still okay. There we go. All right, I'm back, I guess. Uh, I don't know uh, if maybe... Uh, well, we're using the same stream key, so uh, YouTube will get very confused if uh, two things try to drop onto the same stream. Um, so I think uh, we're okay for now, but... Uh, We'll see if people can actually hear me. Checky, checky. Okay. Okay. The uh, stream still has pots. All right. Well, s some people can see it. All right. So I'm just going to go like uh, people will, uh, can see things. All right. So can we see editing the grub config files? Sure. Um, in this case, 
uh, I am running Gentoo, and I have my own custom uh, grub config files. So if I go to root, boot, grub. So in the slash boot slash grub, um, there is a uh, grub.cfg for me. I have an old one that uh, I was playing with early. Um, and if I look at, whoops, not that. And if I look at my grub.cfg, uh, I made this uh, very simple, right? And so um, the grub2 uh, configs can be very uh, hard to read and configure. And so what I've done is I've gone through and made um, I've gone through and I've made everything uh, simple. Like this is just what I need to, to run as much as I can understand. There, there are probably things like the search. Eh, I don't think I need that, but I'm not sure. Ensmod, um, I don't probably need some of that stuff. Like I don't have any fat partitions, so I don't need an Ensmod fat. I did take a lot of this from the... Um, Oh, my headset beeped at me, but it seems to be all right. All right, all right, whatever. So, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to walk through this. So, uh, we got uh, default zero, which means that it's going to go to the default uh, menu entry zero. So, it's this first one right here. This uh, menu entry uh, is going to be the one that, if you don't do anything, it just boots to that. All right. Uh, then there's a timeout. You can set the timeout to be whatever. Uh, timeout is in seconds. And uh, these are defined differently with the little quotes. Uh, so it probably doesn't matter. It probably reads it without the quotes or with it. Um, so the timeout is going to be how long it waits before it tries to boot, uh, whatever is default. Uh, and then these grub command line Linux defaults are uh, things that it adds to the kernel line when you boot uh, to see uh, it, they're just kernel options that you would apply to all of the different things that you're trying to boot. Uh, so you can add quiet, you can add splash, so splash gives you like a little splash screen, you can add quiet so it's not as verbose. Um, so, uh, but those are usual, those are usual options. Uh, you can also put in like single to go into single user there or you know, whatever. Uh, down here in the menu entry, uh, ensmod. Ensmod means that um, it's inserting a module. Uh, and so it's inserting uh, all video, which I'm assuming is just a, a conglomerate of the video um, abilities that Grub can insert in or use. Uh, GZIO, which is, I believe, GZIP. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really... I'd have to go look at the uh, the mods and see what they all do. Uh, it's easy to find all that material. Um, part GPT, that's GPT partitioning stuff. FAT, that's, you know, file allocation table, really old partitioning. Um, search is looking for the root uh, volume. Uh, echo is telling the user something. So, like, when you select this... Uh, when you select this option, it'll tell you, like, hey, I'm starting Gen 2. Uh, Linux, this Linux line is the... Um, aw. It's Michael's birthday today. Happy birthday. Uh, the Linux line is the kernel line. So this is... These are options uh, that... Uh, you're passing to uh, Linux uh, kernel when it's booting. So here I say I want Linux is where the kernel is, right? So DZ image is the name of my kernel. Uh, root is an option, and this is the UUID of my root disk. So it's going to search for that. Uh, it's going to try to boot that as the root disk. And RO is uh, read only. So it's going to try to. Um, load the Linux kernel image in uh, read-only. And then it's going to add these two other ones, uh, Quiet and Splash, at the end of that. 
The NNRD is a uh, RAM FS. Uh, RAM FS is a, or it's an initial RAM FS. What that means is it is an image that has a lot of the drivers uh, in it that you may need to boot. So like a lot of times if you thin the kernel down and you modularize everything, you want to put specific things into an init RAM FS, like um, file systems, uh, networking um, drivers, different things that you really need that those things to initialize the firmware specifically enough to get to the rest of the disk. So when you load in uh, your kernel, you're loading in the kernel without the modules. And then when you start booting, if you try to boot the root volume um, and you don't have the drivers for the root volume, uh, you'll have an issue where uh, you have a core of a kernel, but you don't have your modules. And the modules are on the root disk, but you can't load the root, you can't like pull the root disk up because you don't have the driver hard-coded into the kernel. And because of that, you can't get to the modules, so you can't boot. So that's, that's a problem. That's why we have an NRR RAMFS. That allows you to do things like encryption or file systems and different things and not have to hard load those into the kernel, you can use this as kind of a stepping stone to get the uh, the root volume up so then it can then have access to its modules and keep loading from there. Uh, this is useful for uh, encryption. It's useful for uh, any very various number of things. Um, the Windows kernel and the Linux kernel are known as monolithic kernels. Uh, the way that they work is um, all of your drivers can be loaded into the kernel or they can be modularized and then inserted into the kernel using uh, module insert layers. And uh, I, I mean, I think I am showing something for the CLC, but can you not see it, Robert? Okay. All right, I guess uh, Robert can't see what's going on. Uh, we, we've been having some issues with the YouTube. And uh, on top of that, on top of all of that, apparently AT&T is on fire. Uh, so, at least here in Jacksonville. So, that's uh, that's fun. Um, anyhow, uh, you need this init RAM FS as a kind of a, a, a stepping stone to get your root volume loaded and uh, get everything in. This happened, this is not, these are not Gen 2 specific. This is just Grub. Pretty much all Linuxes nowadays use Grub 2. Uh, this is no exception. You could take something like this and build your own for Debian or Mint or uh, Fedora or Red Hat or whatever. Like they all act very similarly, if not the same. Uh, so this is very universal. Um, I like Gen 2 because, you know, I can sit there and mess around and, and learn stuff and poke at it and make it do weird things, and it's fun. Uh, but this is very universal. Uh, so, my menu, menu entry 1 here is what it's going to default to, because I have my default right there. This second menu entry, I have a known working kernel that I've saved off to this name of a kernel, right? Two things. One, I think I've messed up the uh, <laughs> the directory on this because uh, this probably needs to be that. <laughs> uh, these are relative to the root of the boot file system. And since I have a separate file system for boot, they reside in that. And they are on the root of that file system. Okay, And so... If I was to try to boot that one with the error that I just saw, now I can edit it when I'm in the boot menu. Uh, but if I tried to um, 
if I wanted to actually uh, boot that, I would have to have it like this because it's, uh, let's say you have uh, dev SDA as your, your volume. You have one as your boot directory, but it's its own file system. You have two as your swap and you have three as your root, right? So you would have, um, you'd have something like this. You would have uh, like uh, dev SDA three is your root, dev SDA two is your swap, and dev SDA one is your boot. So your boot here is mounted under your root here, okay? So if I'm inside Linux and I wanna look at this uh, image or this init or MFS, I would need to do slash boot slash bz image, right? But since we're talking about grub, grub is loaded only from this file system. So you have to think of this as kind of like a tiny root. It's a tiny root file system. And when it's booting things, it needs to reference things within that context. Uh, and so that's why they're referenced as absolutes, but starting at root, even though they're mounted under boot. So hopefully that's not too confusing for people. Um, this is if I was actually going to, you know, wind blows 10. Uh, I've actually, I pulled this from my, my laptops and then I was sitting there modifying it a bunch. And, um, there's another concept of chain loading. So Grub is very nice to other operating systems. So if you had um, a system that had both Linux and OS X, or Linux more commonly, Linux and Windows, or Linux and Linux, you have different versions of Linux, um, you can tell it to do different things. Uh, you can either say, hey, I want you to boot this kernel, which is what it's made to do, or, hey, uh, Windows has um, its own loader, right? And so what I want you to do is after Grub's loaded, I want to go to Windows. And the way that I do that is I do a thing called chain loading. Chain loading is um, basically moving down the line. So it... it it loads Grub, so now you're loaded into basically a pseudo operating system. It's a very, 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 very tiny program that is giving you options. So the, the BIOS boots Grub, and then Grub moves on to do other things. Either it loads the Linux kernel in, or it loads, you know, whatever. Um, in this case, what it would do is it would actually um, say, all right, cool. Uh, I need to mount uh, this GPT. Um, it's going to look for an FS UUID. Uh, so it's actually going to search for Windows. It's going to insert a mod called chain, which is the chain loader. And then the chain loader is going to say, all right, I'm going to go find this file. And if I can find this file, I'm going to chain load to it meaning that it's going to initiate that and say here and hand off the boot process to it. Once it hands off the boot process to this specific uh, file, then uh, Windows will then be like, oh, I am um, ready for like booting and it'll continue down that line and boot itself. Uh, so that's chain loading. If you had multiple versions of Windows 10, this might have an issue because there might be multiple instances of this particular directory structure. So Grub might just choose the first one or it might get confused. So you might need to be more specific about where it is or how it's done. But it, this worked for me at the time when I was um, cross-loading uh, Gen 2 Linux and uh, Windows 10. Uh, so worked out for me, uh, but uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, let's see. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's another menu entry for like a, a Gen 2 backup kernel uh, where I just had like a dash old and, uh, you know, I would just move the, the previous one to dash old. Um, so right now I have three entries. I don't know if they're all valid, but, you know, it's been a while since I've been rolling around in here. Um... Let's see. 
Do we have another question? Let me see what the live stream is saying here. Nothing. Okay. So, actually I want to write that because I made a change to fix that. How do you add Windows ME to Grub? Well, first, you got to get a machine that will run Windows ME. And second, you might as well just downgrade the Windows 98 SE because it's better. <laughs> uh, I actually don't know if you can do that, but I'm sure you probably can. Um, next question, anybody? You're on the line. Let's see. How about how to use Emerge? Uh, Emerge is uh, Gen 2's um, package management system. So if I want to uh, do a synchronization, so I synchronize with the mirrors, I could do Emerge Sync, and I'll do, uh, well, actually, I'll just do Sync. Um, and it's probably been a little while since I've uh, synced because I need to um, go through and and do my updates. Uh, Gen 2 updates are a little bit more difficult because you have to compile everything, but sometimes uh, you can end up with like conflicts or uh, strange issues sometimes because you're compiling everything. Um, and the sync itself is back-ended by, uh, I think it's rsync? I was using... Um, Fun2 for a while, and one uses one and one uses the other. I think Gen2 is rsync, and Fun2, I believe, is Git, uh, which is quite a bit faster. Um, have I played with Zenity? No, I don't think I have. Um, oh, by the way, I have, um, uh, on one of my uh, buddy's uh, recommendations, I have been playing with KDE, and it's pretty good. Uh, it's gotten a lot better, um, and uh, I like it. It's it, I had used it long ago, like a long, long time ago, probably like 2003, 2002, um, and I just got totally turned off to it. I didn't like it. Like It had a lot of fancy things, and it, in my experience, those fancy things on my little, poor little laptop made it really slow and lethargic and they just got in the way and it was hard to like configure and at the time uh gnome was a lot faster but it still had its own problems um i eventually fell in love with uh, kde uh, or um uh, xfce xfce uh was really good uh and it's it came around or i started using that around the time that gnome 3 and kde were on their huge bloat phase uh, and so GNOME was turned into some kind of weird thing that Ubuntu was pushing, uh, and it was like a tablet interface. It was just totally unusable for I just hated it, and it was so slow on some of the systems I was trying to use. Um, and uh, there you go. So it synced. Um, I, I have like a quiet um, in my uh, Grub config, or in my uh, eMerge config, so it does that. Uh, but yeah, I, I was on uh, XFCE for a long time, and uh, uh, what one of my buddies had said is uh, that uh, KDE actually had made, been making a lot of strides for uh, efficiency, for actually making it uh, faster and more, um, like it's still pretty, but it's it's actually got a better footprint than XFCE, which has become kind of bloated because people have been going to it. It's really, it's really good, but it's becoming maybe f not necessarily feature or like too feature rich, but uh, potentially uh, where it has issues um, in, or it's not, not necessarily what has issues. It's just, you know, bigger. It's, it's, it's using up more memory and stuff. Uh, and so, uh, and and I believe I'm actually using XFCE here. I'm not sure. I, I think this is XFCE, yeah. This is Linux Mint, so they have three flavors. XFCE, um, uh, Cinnamon, and Mate. So Mate is a rebuild of GNOME 2, Cinnamon is a rebuild of GNOME 3, and then XFCE is XFCE. Uh, but uh, yeah, on my laptop I've been running uh, KDE, and it's been uh, it's pretty nice. It's, it's, it's very pretty. And uh, it seems to be fairly good on the resources. So, 
uh, Enlightenment's another one that I have tried, but I, I couldn't really get into it. I mean, I, I've done like black box and stuff before, and I just don't feel like going and configuring things uh, in that detail anymore. I don't have that kind of time. Uh, but that being said, I, I run Gen 2, so. <laughs> um, as an aside, we are recording this on YouTube, but I failed to record it on the DVR because I was not expecting this to be the main program. So, um, all right, we'll move on. You guys get to see this this once, and then I'll just leave the, the YouTube potato version up there, and then people can watch for like 35, 40 minutes as sitting there messing around. Uh, all right, so... What next? What can we do? Oh yeah, we're gonna do uh, emerge. So let's say that I let's see. What do I not have on here? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think I have Emacs. Oh, I certainly don't. I didn't install it myself. So so I'll, I'll do a search for Emacs, um, and it should find me a bunch of stuff. There you go. And um, if I wanted to install it, it is this guy, all right? The way that the, um, it's, it's really cool actually, the, the way that the uh, system is structured is really nice. I don't know of any other Linux that does this, or probably are, but like Debian, it's very flat. I mean, they, they have like a, a selection thing, but I don't think it's on disk. Um, there are other tools to do this, but as far as I know, and choose the only one that actually does it on the file system level and to me that's really nice especially on a on a server like i know on debian you can use like aptitude and stuff to to get into like sections and i know uh, uh red hat has like groups and stuff like that but uh yeah i like this it's cool so if i go to um uh, or uh, user portage i can see all of the groups all right that packages are in um, and so, uh, like, I want to see all of the editors. So there's app editors. And in this, uh, these are all the editors that, that they support. So there's, like, here's Vim, right? That's the one I usually use. There's, uh, probably Nano. There's Neo Vim. There's Nano. Um, there's Latex. Uh, there's uh, Emacs. There's even a Curses Hex edit, apparently. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things in here. Uh, Mousepad, that's a pretty good little GUI one. That's uh, what I usually used when I was in XFCE. Uh, and the reason I'm not going to install one of the GUI ones is because I don't want to have X and stuff installed. Because this is a headless server. I don't. There's nothing. There's no video running around on it. Uh, so, uh, and the reason I'm not I'm trying to install Nano is because Nano is probably installed already. Um, Gen 2 uh, kind of defaults all of their um, all of their build language, all of their editing and stuff around Nano. So Nano is likely uh, pre-installed. And uh, I got nothing against Nano. Nano is a very nice little program. Um, I just prefer Vim because I've used it for a long time and it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's got a pretty sharp learning curve though. So. Eh. Um, so whoop. let's go to Emacs and you can see that these are the builds, right? So, um, in Red Hat, I would have to, Red Hat, Oracle Linux, uh, CentOS, you know, whatever your flavor, uh, Fedora, I'd have to go in and I'd be like, hey, uh, yum, list, show duplicates, Emacs, right? And then that would give me all of the available versions. Uh, with this, I could just go to this directory which is rsynced um, from the mirrors and uh, just see what they have. Um, and so I can just like look at these and then I can actually look at the actual build files themselves. So uh, let's say, um, let's see what it would try to install here. Uh, so emerge PV Emacs. Okay, so PV means pretend verbose. All right. Uh, you could do this as a user, um, 
this is what it would do if I told it to do something. All right, so it's going to try to use Emacs 26.3 R1, uh, which is this guy right here. All right. Uh, it's also going to include these things because these are prerequisites. These are dependencies that uh, the Emacs editor needs. You can see here the U's. Uh, we have these red here, and then we have all these little blue guys with the minuses in front. Uh, what these are are included and not included things uh, either based on particular uh, setups or by default uh, for this package. Uh, so it's got like SSL. If I don't like, I don't know why I would need SSL, but maybe it's got like SSL stuff in there. You can look up these flags on the internet. You can go onto Gentoo's site, find the um, program, and then look at it and be like, hey, you know, what do these flags mean? Um, and see that type of stuff. So let's say that I wanted to have it without X support, right? Well, right now it defaults to no X support. Cool, I'm good to go. But I could add X support and I could add JPEG support or image magic. Like uh, Emacs is a very complex program. I've The only time I've used it is on accident and, they, and I've looked up how to get out of it. And that's how I know a lot of people use Vim as well. So I'm not gonna say anything bad about Emacs. I don't know. Like, I'm sure it's fa it's fantastic. I don't know. Uh, so, what can you do? Uh, you can add and remove these flags to manipulate how the program exists. This is very unique to Gen 2. Um, and I like that a lot. Uh, so, if I don't want something to have a particular thing or I want it to have a different thing. So let's say I want it to have GTK1, not GTK2. I could choose whichever one I want. I want it to have GIF support, but I don't want it to have JPEG support. I could do that. Uh, with uh, Red Hat, with Debian, you can do that too, but you have to compile it yourself, which is a whole nother basket of eggs. This is all rolled together. It's all part of the system. Like I can, I, I don't have system D on my system. I'm running um, uh, RC, um, which is something that I believe Gen 2 maintains, uh, open RC. And uh, I like it a lot. I enjoy it. It's a, kind of a traditional in its system. I know how it works. I know how it, it rolls. Everything works well for me. I know system D as well. I just don't particularly favor it. And since this is my system, uh, I went with the RC one. Uh, but at work, I use systemd all the time, so it's not it's not a really big deal, but I get the choice, and that's why I like about Linux, you get the choice. Uh, so if I was to try to install this, um, it would uh, walk through, it would probably install these four first, and then the last one because uh, they're prerequisites to the first one. Uh, so let's look at this e-build. Alright, so I've not actually poked around in e-builds very much. Uh, but uh, here are our licenses. Uh, so these are the things that uh, the li licensure that the uh, program resides under. Uh, I'm not sure what slot is. Uh, source uh, URI um, is where it comes from, I'm supposing. Uh, here is its its home page. So you can go here and uh, and check out Emacs uh, or like uh, the the people that make it. Uh, a little description about it. So like if I queried, and a lot of this stuff is going to be for um, uh, eMerge. Now you're, you're going to do this, like I've been doing a lot of writing of RPMs, right? You're going to do this in when you're building RPMs, you're going to do this when you're building devs, you're going to do this when you're distributing uh, things for Gen 2. You're going to have to have uh, specific keywords and different materials that tell the, tell the package manager uh, what the associated programs are, what it relies on, what it, you know, what's its name, what version it is, uh, you know, all these different things. That's all in the uh, configuration file when you build your RPM, when you build your deb uh, package, and that gets bundled into the package. For Gen 2, these are just distributed, and then all of the sources are distributed too. So you're building everything from scratch. And so you get a very raw look at like what's going on, um, which is, I think, fun, like personally, but I don't know. Um, here, the keywords. Uh, the keywords uh, designate what systems it can be built on. 
so yes, Gentoo is a uh, compile operating system. That means that you can compile it on pretty much anything. Uh, so like if you want to build a Spark version of Gentoo, you can do it. Uh, you know, you, you you boot up, you get the Spark uh, stuff compiled in using the Spark compilers, and, and uh, you can build everything with Spark. It's great. Um, but that being said, that doesn't mean that all of the applications can support all of the architectures. Uh, your general ones that you're going to be using are going to be AMD 64 and x86. Um, there's a lot of other things. Like if you're using a Pi, you're probably going to be using ARM or ARM 64, um, depending on the processor. Uh, you could be using like a PowerPC, like an older Mac. I think it's our power PCs. There's RISC processors. There's Spark processors. These are all processor types, by the way. There's Alpha processors. So you can compile this for different things, um, which is, you know, part of the fun of open source. You can, you know, somebody's like, I want support for this, and they can sit there and write it in. Uh, here's your use flags. We were seeing those earlier. And um, probably these little pluses were what uh, were being added uh, by default by the program. It wants to thread naturally. It wants to use XPM. Uh, but uh, the other ones are probably all optional. All right, so here's your I notify. Um, and then, oh, here's required use. And so it has to have, I'm not sure, because it doesn't have to have X. We just saw that it was, you know, without X and it was fine. Let me just walk through and make sure there's no, uh, nobody asking questions. Okay, thanks. We're good. Um, these, I believe, yeah, are depend. It's the these are the dependencies. And so, if you have X, like if you if you give it the X flag, then it needs potentially all of these things. Um, more than likely, if it's uh, if you're running, if you say yes to X, and um, that X also, if you see this known base gconf, then you also need gconf, right? Or you know, so, or maybe if it's gconf, then you need to have this version of gconf or better, or something like that. Um, again, I haven't really, I've never actually been in these files, so this is a new thing for me too. It's fun. Um, I'm sure there are very good documentation sets uh, for Gen 2 and, and whatnot. But again, this is uh, fairly transferable knowledge, like. RPM is going to have similar things. You have like your build dependencies, you have your package dependencies, you have your version, your description, uh, your post scripts, your pre scripts, your you know all, all kinds of different things. And it's actually kind of annoying to build RPMs, uh, but uh, eh, you got, somebody's got to do it. Um, yeah, so this is a this is a emerge file. There's uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. There's some scripting. Uh, it's probably like how it's building things, how it's compiling, installing. Yeah, so this is, this is very similar to a, a, an RPM file where it's like telling it, telling the system what to do. It's like you need to install these things. And then if you're installing, then uh, here's how you install. Like here, here's the packages you, or here's the files you put in. Here's the little scripts you run, all that kind of stuff. And then it has a po pre-install, post-install. It's probably got... Uh, yeah, post remove, so it's after it removes, it does these things. Um, yeah, this is very similar to, uh, you know, RPM and, and different things. Um, that's 8.15. Uh, unless anybody has uh, any more questions, I mean, we can kind of end here, or uh, I think, uh, you know, we've been keeping folks for a while. Uh, do keep in mind, we have an IRC server. Um, and uh, we'd love to see you guys on it. Uh, I, I try to be on there, but it's sometimes I get hopped back off and uh, I'll jump back on. I see people like hopping on and off, and I think that's because they're on AT&T, and so they might be having some, some issues. Um, but uh, there's your little tour. Oh, yeah. you know, you're welcome. And, uh, you know, it's any time. I just want uh, everybody to have a good time. Uh 
this is our local Linux community, right? And so, you know, it really needs to not just be me or just, you know, some of the other guys. And uh, everybody's part of the community. Um, yeah, uh, the IRC system is, let me get that. Where'd it go? There you go. Uh, if you go to that web page, uh, that it has all the IRC uh, system information. Uh, we're on Freenode. Uh, you need to make an account um, and log in. And once you've made an account and logged in, you can jump on. Uh, that's pretty much the only uh, restriction that we have on there. Uh, just kind of keep uh, spammers and stuff away which I don't think that's really been a problem, especially not as late, but uh, eh, that's what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, everybody, uh, this is a community, and uh, we want to keep it going. If uh, people want to jump on IRC and chat with us, if you want to jump onto the, uh, the mailing list and ask questions, we have a lot of people on the mailing list as well. Um, and uh, have a good time. So uh, enjoy Linux. Enjoy. I mean, enjoy all, all the operating systems. Just learn, learn what you can about all of them because they're all very similar. They they're all uh, built in different but very similar ways. Um, and uh, the more you learn about any of them, you, the more you learn about all of them. Really, is what it comes down to. Uh, so if you're a Windows admin, you know, learn Windows really well. And then, you know, once you really understand how, like, the kernel works, the boot system, the, like, interactions between users, all that kind of stuff, and then you start moving into Linux, you'll understand it a lot more. Uh, if you want to play with Linux, Linux, one of the greatest things is it's free. Uh, so it, it's no, you know, like you can just fire up VirtualBox. Like, in fact, the, the system you're watching right now is in VirtualBox. Uh, well, <laughs> the... The Mint system is VirtualBox, and then I'm SSH'd into a server that's, you know, a physical server. Uh, but uh, I'm running Mint inside of a VirtualBox because uh, I like the, the terminal a lot better in Linux than I can get anything in Windows for. Um, it works really well. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the best things about VirtualBox or, you know, any of the VM structures is that uh, they allow you to play without having additional hardware, without having to spend the money or go dumpster diving or whatever uh, for learning. And I know that uh, times are hard for a lot of people. Right now is a really good time to learn, and it makes it even better if you can learn something that's free and that is something that's used a lot in Linux, Windows, uh, not so much Mac, but like... Linux and Windows services and servers uh, are a uh, something that people are going to need for a long time, um, and uh, I find it a lot of fun, personally. That's that's my deal. Is I, I do it because I, I enjoy it, um, and uh, always enjoy talking to folks that uh, like it too. So uh, we'll end here, and. Uh, Hope everybody enjoyed the uh, little impromptu uh, CLC. And uh, you guys stay safe and uh, enjoy. And hope to see you guys on uh, IRC. Have a nice day.